All right, welcome to Why Is This Good, a podcast by the Naples Writers Workshop. Today's episode is a special YouTube exclusive episode, and we will be sharing a piece of flash fiction slash micro fiction slash nano fiction slash it's a six word story. And John is going to read it in its entirety. For sale, baby shoes, never worn. Wow. <laughs> Period. We were talking before we recorded that we don't know who definitively wrote this, but it's one of those ones where you look up short fiction or six word fiction because there are prompts like this. This is the first one. It's yeah. the best one. The you classic. Can't top it. So, John, why did you want to discuss it? Because it's short and it does all the things a fiction does. That's right. Yeah. In six words, somehow. I realized this is obviously one that everybody's read and we've visited it before, even in our workshop. But I realized when I read it this last time and I was trying to think of something to say about it other than yet, like you said, it's, it does everything, is that it also plays with a format that we're familiar with, which is a classified. So when you think about it being written in that kind of format and classifieds are short, I wonder when I read it this time if whoever wrote this had that in mind as a sort of outline instead of you know write something short in six words I feel like the other ones that you come across when you when you look these up um, particularly I've looked up like six word horror stories and they always kind of start with something that piques your imagination and then you fill in the rest it's like um, I shut off the light and two seconds later it was flipped back on that's that's a terrible one but it sets something up it pricks the hairs up on your neck and then you're doing a, a lot of the the, the legwork. I feel like with this story, though, it does all the legwork for you, right? It sets up this complete story. Yeah. And like you said, it's because we we know what to expect from that format of the, the right. classified ad. Yeah. You're just getting a glimpse of whatever it is they're selling. And in this case, we're obviously wondering if it, if the shoes were never worn because the baby didn't make it, right? They bought these hoping that the baby would, would wear them. It has that uh, a trick I always like where the main character is never there either, where you're kind of immediately, you're wondering about the character you need to know about the character the, the character doesn't have the character doesn't have to be present to be any more intriguing that's a great point it's almost like a scenario but like you said the character is definitely off the page what makes this fascinating is that there is like someone who experienced some kind of loss right but we don't know about them or is it just someone who came across the baby shoes right see that's that's all the ways that we can like <laughs> derail this but I, but I think for this I like to think of it as having a definite point to it I think that's why it works for the most part because it's clear then Again, to kind of debunk my point, I guess you wouldn't. You could only know if they were never worn if you bought them, right? Right. Unless you're selling overstock. <laughs> 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 These are Air Jordans and uh, in baby size. This idea uh, of suggesting a character from with uh, language, the, the knowledge, like we, you mentioned, like who would know that they were never worn? Yeah. The, this is what makes us fill in the blanks: is all those, all the complications that words evoke in our minds. You know, like to wear something is to deliberately put it on and that requires deliberation and that requires someone to to know whether or not someone deliberated about it you know etc cetera, etc cetera. for sale is the same thing like to sell something has all kinds of mental apparatus wrapped around it too so you get to a picture of a character just from these um, words that aren't specifically about a character because they entangle conscious mental processes somebody making deliberate decisions I think that's something that um, we can do in, in long fiction too and in, in larger scale. I think if this was written today, it would be a Facebook marketplace mm. post <laughs> and there would be some rambling explanation to go along with it and there'd be a photo too. Yeah, it'd be, it'd it'd be, be a terrible. totally different ballgame. You, <laughs> you'd have someone explaining why and insisting on the fact that these were never worn, right? And like shoes with pictures from all angles. So when I read this though, I'm like, I still can't get out of my mind that everyone says that Hemingway wrote it. So I'm thinking like, this is an old story and I'm thinking it was definitely in a newspaper and I'm thinking of all the connotations of that, like who our age places that classified that these days, right? So I'm also taken back to like a time and a place, I feel like. Yeah. Maybe one of the lessons for people who write fiction is just to make your sentences count. And that's probably, this is a great example because it's so short. You can have a short sentence and really have like a punch to it. And you can, I mean, obviously the, the short, the micro fiction, tell a story as quickly as you can, but you can do that within a larger story too. I think some of my, I don't know if they're my favorite writers, but writers that I like like kind of seem to be inherently storyteller from sentence to sentence and it doesn't necessarily derail their story they just kind of have like this stories come
coming out of stories and out, out of stories and they just sort of breed one another. So I think if you can think that if you're putting together your, your typical 10 page short story, maybe try to think less about A to B, but like think more about A, A, A and just try to stay within the sentence and then just let it build from that. And I think you can get way, you can really pack a lot in, in there and make it really dense. This is what we talked about with for the Alice Monroe story was uh, um, how all the details could be thought of as micro stories, right? That's right, yeah. And in the same way, if, if you if you make each of your details a piece of flash fiction or micro fiction, you get that fractal feeling for your fiction. Yeah, that's a cool way to look at it. I think that's, but that's the, the point though, is that to make these stories build sentence after sentence, they really have to be packed full of details. Yeah. I'm writing a novel right now, right? I'll never finish it, but I'm writing it and I am so bored. <laughs> <laughs> and it's because I'm picturing these things and I'm wanting to imply all these things. But then when it comes down to a scene, I'm like making characters move over here and making them come home so it makes sense, you know? And I'm trying to shorten it and tighten it and think about it in ways that we're pointing out now are, are really fun to read. And I realize when I do it, it's when I've packed other details in that make that sentence interesting in and of itself, right? You're not reading it to get to the next one, but you read it and there's something satisfying about that. It's not easy. <laughs> no. It's so hard. I wrote an essay like 10 years ago about, I realized um, writing computer code, writing software mm -hmm. for me was much, much easier than writing fiction. I was like, <laughs> yeah. why, why is it so much easier? And I was just the thinking formula. about that. Yeah. Computer code, it all builds on each itself the way that fiction does. Like everything's tied to each other. You have to write functions that feed into other parts of the code. But the thing about if you write a function that works, you don't have to think about why it works or how it works anymore. You just use it as a function that does the thing you want it to do. Whereas fiction, you have to be constantly conscious of all the ways everything's interconnected as you write every little word, or you, you can be. And I think that's what makes it difficult. And then the revision process is just like filling that in and making it all play together like an orchestra. So yeah, I, I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> it's tough. All right. Anything else we want to point out? I think we each kind of took a lesson from this that we already kind of mentioned, but pack those details in, make every sentence count. Yeah. Enjoy your sentences. It doesn't have to be just all story. I mean, enjoy the building box. Yeah. Awesome. The details build character. And the last thing I would mention is that um, now that YouTube has caught up with the podcast schedule, we're not going to release every Monday. We're going to start releasing with the podcast on the 1st and the 15th of every month. Perfect. There and then go. maybe we'll have more of these if you guys like it. You guys. So click like and subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks, guys. <laughs> You're one of them now. Yeah. But I said it as a joke, right? Yeah.